I'm at the State House in Annapolis, and I'm in the rotunda section. And the reason why I'm here is because we're going to talk about six of the Lord Baltimores and their portraits. They've been restored and now reside in the State House. There are six Lord Baltimores, and we have uh, four of them hanging right here in the rotunda, and the last two who were not the best of characters on the wall leading up to the governor's office. The paintings tell a story about the ideas that created our state. The state's artistic curator explained how these men became the Lords of Baltimore. George Calvert was, in effect, the Secretary of State to Charles I. And um, when he made clear that he'd converted to Catholicism, he lost his job. Um, but he was very close to the king, and that's when he petitioned for a title. And so he was given the title Lord Baltimore after Baltimore, Ireland, on the southern coast of Ireland. One of the things I think is fascinating is Lord Baltimore number two, who has an actual map and has his grandson with him, yes. and we see an African with him. Yes. A lot of folks will go, that's kind of extraordinary during the time frame in which they live, or was it? It was most extraordinary, and it's the one, it's the one painting that's worth more than all the other paintings combined. Uh, it's the one painting that was purchased by William Randolph Hearst, and it was on display in his mansion in California. So what happened is in the 1930s, the Eden family, have, after having these portraits for several hundred years, fell on hard times. They auctioned them off. Uh, William Randolph Hearst wound up acquiring that second portrait, the most valuable one. And what Dr. Hugh Young from Baltimore, he set about assembling all of them, but of course he couldn't get the one William Randolph Hearst and waited until William Randolph Hearst's death. And then he went to the Anacpat Library and said, look, you get that one picture, you can have all the other ones to hang there in the Anik Pratt. The Anik Pratt comes and says, we need a new library. How much does it cost? $60 million. You want $60 million for a new library? Guess what? You have some paintings that, that we need to put in a state house and let them on, be on display for the school children. Everybody can understand Maryland history. So we worked at a long-term lease. We helped fund the Anik Pratt Library. They transported the paintings down here. We're going to make copies of them and send the copies back to Anik Pratt Library. But meanwhile, this building where we're standing has been in place since the Revolutionary War. It's the oldest continuing state house in the United States, and now these pictures are here where they belong. It's really an extraordinary painting. Um, he is holding in his hand the charter for Maryland, which includes the map, and it's sort of one of the first depictions that we see of the Calvert Arms in there, which is borrowed as part of the Maryland state flag, Baltimore City's flag. The Calvert Arms are quite familiar to all of us, the yellow and black. Um, he's standing in that portrait with his grandson, who is presumed to, who will be the um, fourth Lord Baltimore, but this child ends up dying at a young age, and it's his younger brother, Benedict Leonard Calvert, who becomes the fourth Lord Baltimore. In the background is a house servant who belonged to the Calverts. Um, he is dressed in fine clothing, almost as fine as the young boy in the picture, um, which is an indication of his high rank as a household servant. We worked with a very well-known conservator in Great Falls, Virginia named David Olin, uh, and he oversaw the restoration of all of the canvases. The frames were separately, separately restored as well. Some of them had suffered um, from years of neglect, and just as anybody, anything ages, uh, it tends to deteriorate. What do you hope uh, visitors, because we see a lot of them around here, even as we're doing this interview, get out of all of this? Um, this opportunity to come as close to standing in the presence of these founders of our of our great state of Maryland. Um, there's so many details that were revealed in the cleaning, things like fancy embroidered stockings on the Fourth Lord Baltimore and very fancy shoes and furs and the textiles indicated in all of them. But to let it spark their own imagination for what Maryland can be in the same way that it sparked the imaginations of the Lords Baltimore.